Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on the basics of change management. Today we're going to be talking about the reasons for change management, and then we're going to conclude with some different change management processes. I have a fair amount of ground to cover, but not a whole lot of time, so let's go ahead and begin this session. Of course, I'm going to begin with the reason for change management. In a fairly simple network, it is fairly easy to evaluate not only the necessity for a change, but also the possible impacts of that change. However, as the network system increases in size and complexity, it becomes more difficult to not only determine what changes are necessary, but also the possible impacts that the proposed changes will have on the system as a whole. It is quite possible, even highly probable, that a single change will have a ripple effect on the whole system. Change management processes are used to introduce changes to a system in a controlled manner to minimize possible disruption and potential pandemonium. With the reason for change management covered, let's move on to different change management processes. First up is document the reason for a change. Proposed changes should have a solid reason for occurring. A best practice is to include why the change is needed for IT reasons and also for business reasons. As the change proceeds through the process, more documentation may be added to the reason for a change. So let's talk about the change request. A formal change request procedure is used during the approval process and should include several other sub-documents that can be used to gain approval. One of those documents is the configuration procedures documents. These document the exact steps required to implement the change, including affected devices, applications, and processes. The change request should also include a rollback process. As all change carries risk, a plan to reverse changes is required in order to gain approval. Then there are potential impact documents. The potential impact documents are a good faith effort to identify all possible impacts to the overall system, both the positive and the negative. Then there is the notification procedures. After the potential impacts have been identified, the people responsible for the affected systems must receive notification of the proposed change. Keeping your stakeholders informed and involved will greatly increase the chances of a successful change. Let's talk about approval processes. Proposed changes should be vetted and approved, not only by management, but also by senior IT personnel, security experts, and by a selection of those affected by the change. Some companies create change control boards to not only evaluate proposed changes, but to also implement a means of approving changes. These boards also assure that all approved changes have been fully tested and documented. The change boards meet periodically to assess the status of an approved change. This helps to keep it on track for implementation. Change boards maintain responsibility for the change and verify that the process is proceeding according to the configuration procedure. And finally, change boards help to ensure that approved changes are implemented correctly. When planning out a change to an IT system, it's important to involve a maintenance window procedure. A maintenance window is the amount of time that a system will be down or unavailable during the proposed change. Before the final schedule is developed, an evaluation of all affected systems must be performed with particular attention paid to mission-critical systems. It is possible that the proposed maintenance window may exceed the allowable downtime for critical systems, which will affect when the maintenance window can be scheduled. A sub-procedure to the maintenance window procedure is authorized downtime. Once a maintenance window has been identified, it is then possible to determine the optimum time to implement the change. In many cases, system changes need to occur during off hours, as in after the close of business or during weekends when systems are not utilized as much. Then there's the notification of change procedure. 
after a sufficient time has elapsed in which to evaluate any issues, all stakeholders, those are the people who approved the change and all others affected by the change, should be notified of the successful completion of the change. This allows the stakeholders to further monitor the systems for any unforeseen or residual issues relating to the change. And finally, there's final documentation. The change process should end with an update to the appropriate documentation, including network configurations, additions to the network, and physical location changes. A closing change report should also be created that summarizes the change to help refine the change procedures and processes even further. This closing report should include what went right and what went wrong during the approved change. That concludes this session on the basics of change management. I talked about the reasons for change management and then I concluded with different change management processes. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I hope to do another one soon.